Order up, motherfuckers. It's Gaming Monitor Review Day. Today we have the Innocent 24.5 inch 1440p 240Hz mini LED gaming monitor. I've been testing this monitor for about six weeks now as my primary gaming PC monitor for both media recording and gaming and a little content creation. And this video is my thoughts. Disclaimer, this monitor was gifted to me by Innocent in exchange for a video review within a set time frame. I get to keep the monitor after this video is published, but no money changed hands. They had no say in the script or any talking points. They don't get to see a draft, none of it. Full collab details on screen if you wanna hit pause and read. Otherwise, let's get into the box. I wanna be upfront that I am not a professional monitor tester. I've, I've been in PC gaming since I was 16 years old. I'm 35. I worked in IT for 15 years. I'm a very technical person, but I'm not going to dissect every spec and every data sheet and compare it against every monitor that's come out in the last six months. I'm just gonna give you my thoughts as an IT person who is a casual gamer, who has had nothing but IPS and VA panels for the past five years, and somebody who is experiencing mini LED and HDR for the first time. In the box, you get the monitor, thankfully, a proprietary power supply, display port cable, the stand, and then a manual. 24 and a half inch diagonal, 2560 by 1440p resolution, 240 hertz, Refresh rate, one millisecond response time, G-Sync compatibility, FreeSync compatibility, mini LED, it has HDMI 2.1 and DisplayPort 1.4, HDR 1000, IPS panel with matte anti-glare finish, adjustable height that has swivel, pivot, and tilt, built-in speakers, 100% sRGB, 99% DCI-P3, 98% Adobe RGB, and a 2.5 million to one contrast ratio. There is 100 millimeter VESA mounting screws on the back, as well as LEDs on the back for illuminating that wall. They're in the woods. Most of those specs are straightforward. Size, resolution, refresh rate, response time, G-Sync, FreeSync, all great specs. Seeing HDMI 2.1 on there is awesome. The, the parts that I wanna spend the most time on is the QD Mini LED, AKA the Quantum Dot Mini LED, uh, color gamut and color accuracy and HDR. 24 inches and 1440p resolution is my favorite monitor size and resolution for PC gaming. Not too big, not too small, high pixel density, uh, which equals a sharp image. Looks great on the desk, and look at it. And since my gaming PC is an i7 8700K and a 3080 Ti, I can't push the most graphically intensive games, super high resolution, super high FPS, uh, which makes this monitor perfect smack dab in the metal metal middle for me what makes this monitor unique is the qd mini led panel the mini led backlight is divided into zones and this monitor has 576 of them this means that each one of those zones can dim and brighten independently to put that simply better contrast uh, this differs from OLED, which has a per pixel lighting instead of per zone, then the quantum dot part of that spec allows the panel to produce more accurate color. This is also how it differs from an IPS panel that doesn't dim by zone. So usually, mini LED monitors are placed somewhere between better than IPSs, but not quite as dope as OLED. Of course, one of the biggest sticking points with OLED is the burn-in and you don't have to worry about that with mini LED at all. Some things to note here, when it comes to high resolution, high refresh rate monitors, something that needs to be considered is bandwidth. If you have a 1080p resolution, 60 Hertz monitor running in 8-bit color, that is approximately three gigabits per second of data. If we bump that up to 1440p, 60 Hertz, 8-bit, you're at about eight gigabits per second of data. Bump that up to 4K, 60 Hertz, 8-bit, 17 gigabits per second. That bandwidth number is important because it tells you what port your GPU needs to have, what kind of cable you need, and what port the monitor needs to have. 1440p, 240 hertz at 10 bit exceeds DisplayPort 1.4 spec, meaning you can't run max resolution, max frame rate with HDR 10 bit on and get the full experience unless you have something called DSC or display stream compression uh, or chroma subsampling. This is what allows DisplayPort 1.4 to carry the 1440p, 240 hertz, 10-bit data stream compressed as opposed to uncompressed. 
I can't find anywhere in the Innocent documentation that the monitor supports DSC, and the fact that I can't enable 10-bit when 240 hertz is enabled kind of confirms that. Now, through a bunch of research and reading online, 1440p, 240 hertz, 10-bit was right near the tippy top of the theoretical max for DisplayPort 1.4. Plus, once you start getting up there in resolution and frame rate, the length of the cable that you can use gets shorter and shorter and shorter. And because my PC, did I just kick the camera? I did, I apologize. Because my PC is in a server rack over here to the left, I have to have a 10 foot display port cable that goes from PC to monitor. So if you want to enable 10 bit color on this monitor, use HDR and you want to use DisplayPort, you're gonna have to bump your refresh rate down to 165 Hertz. My experience with this monitor as a whole has been very solid. I didn't experience any bugs, irregularities, or issues with the setup, uh, with my use of the monitor for productivity uh, or gaming. All my gaming experiences were positive. And once I took the time a second time to properly dial in my HDR settings within Windows 11 and NVIDIA control panel and using the Windows 11 HDR calibration tool that you download from the Windows store, I had a much better time. I did have to find, I did have to go through a few cables before I found a cable that could handle the max bandwidth without any flickering. That was an issue on my side. Uh, so once I got my cheap crappy cable out of there, it was all good. So over, over the last six weeks, I would say I probably put around 30 hours of gameplay into this monitor and with around 10 hours uh, of other use and testing. If I hadn't gotten this monitor for free, I picture myself spending $280 on this display, I would be very happy. I would be very satisfied, especially comparing that to the last monitor that I bought, which was a Dell gaming monitor. It was 24 inches, 144 Hertz VA panel. I think that was like 240 bucks just a year or so ago. So aside from it being a little on the thick side, not as stylish, I hate having five OSD buttons instead of a joystick. This monitor feels like an upgrade in every way. Some things that are just so-so that aren't necessarily about this monitor in particular, but about the HDR gaming experience on Windows. Gaming in HDR, adds a bunch of drag to the gaming experience. Using 10-bit color means you gotta have the correctly spec GPU, cable, and monitor. The cable has to be high quality and the right length, AKA always shorter than convenient. You have to calibrate the display. You have to calibrate your settings within Windows. The game has to support HDR. You have to calibrate each game with HDR individually. You might have to enable and disable HDR based on whether you're gaming or drawing or photo editing or video editing. And at first, I was super bummed out about having to possibly turn on HDR, turn it on and off. And then I learned that Windows Alt B is a shortcut that you can turn HDR on and off. I would highly recommend going to YouTube after this video is done and searching Windows 11 HDR and seeing the videos that come up. Give those a watch. As far as the not so great, Monitor is pretty thick, much thicker than all the other monitors that I've used recently between Innocent, Titan Army, Dell, and UPerfect. Proprietary power supply, I hate it. Please stop it. Honestly, I'd rather have the monitor be even thicker than it already was than to have a proprietary power supply. I understand that it might be a thing because of the mini LED and needing way more juice for the brightness. I just hate it. Blooming, there was a little bit of blooming and this really only became an issue when I left on local dimming when I was not in a game, which again, Innocent recommends that you turn this off when you're not in game, so not a big issue. When the monitor first turns on, there's a green and black OSD splash screen that says what input it's connected to. It's just front and center, perfectly covers the login screen on Windows 11, so you have to wait for the computer to wake up, wait for the monitor to wake up, wait for that screen to go away. It's a first world problem. My final thoughts, if you are playing PC games on Windows and you don't care about HDR, this is a stellar monitor choice. If you're interested in OLED because of the improvements with clarity, color, and brightness, without all the complications of OLED and having to deal with burn-in. If you are interested in HDR and you keep in mind all the frustrations and the additional steps that are necessary in order to use this monitor to its full potential, keeping in mind the DisplayPort and HDMI specs, it's still a, still a seller monitor choice. When you're getting into the category of these monitors that are so high spec, there are so many more factors that come into play as opposed to just 
plugging in that blue cable called VGA and having it work as it should. Windows 11 HDR complications aside, I think the monitor is great. It looks great. It plays great. So bright, so vibrant, very clear, very clear image. Gaming on it has been fantastic and I've very much enjoyed it. If you decide that you want to pick up one of these monitors, there is a sale that just started a few days ago that is going all the way through Halloween where you can get 10% off any monitor on their website. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I hope you take care of yourself. Good night.